Hi guys, Sensei M here. I haven't done a camera review in a long while since the EPL8 and uh, I saw the latest EPL10 now and still I think uh, this camera brand hasn't learned uh, the need to put an external microphone port for vloggers and that is the primary reason why I think my Olympus OMD EM102 needs an upgrade. Right now I'm filming with my Nikon D750 full frame. My, my full frame is so big and heavy and I think this full frame will stay in the house or in the studio for a long time. I just use it for my photography gigs. Um, lately I've been vlogging a lot. Sadly my Olympus couldn't uh, keep up with uh, the, the need for vlogging because it doesn't have an external microphone jack and you know vlogging videos is all about audio and visuals maybe it was made for a time when uh, retro futuristic cameras were a thing and i would love to use this olympus it's my first mirrorless camera i've traveled a lot with this uh, olympus camera i love it i love it except that the video is not up to date anymore likewise uh, this part that that slings up is just for for you know for lower ground shots but it i couldn't see myself if i were to vlog in it so uh one primary consideration when i was looking for a vlogging camera is that it should swing to the side like this and hence i chose fujifilm xt 200 I could have chosen a Sony, but uh, the Sony, uh, was it ZV-1 or the other way around? Yeah, I think it's ZV-1. Looks decent and the video, promotional video is uh, okay. The, the, the facial uh, focus is good and then the subject change by showing a product or a food or anything object for a change in focus is also good. The only problem with the Sony is that sadly here in Japan, Almost all Sony products are in Japanese operating system. No wonder, because the foreign population here is just 2 million out of 120 million Japanese. So understandably, but of course there is a need for um, an overseas international model for Sony. And so I did not choose the Sony. So uh, meanwhile, I did an unboxing of my Fujifilm X-T200. I scored this over Rakuten. Fujifilm costs similar to how much I, I bought the Olympus camera mm, three or four years ago. So, um, so it's just like a simple replacement or an enhancement of what was lacking in my Olympus camera. So I'll probably keep this for semi-professional gigs, fun shoots, but uh, I will still keep my use my Nikon uh, D750 for professional uh, photography jobs. Uh, meanwhile, this Nikon D750 works best in the studio. I know the functions very well. I've I've been a Nikon user over more than 10 years now and I love the Nikon system. I love the colors. I love the crisp colors. But now I'm more into videos. There is really a need now for me to use a vlogging camera. And that's why I've been emphasizing a vlogging camera because this is all what is worth to me. So, uh, but Nikon, you will always be my studio buddy, but don't feel bad that I'm using now a Fujifilm X-T200. I've been vlogging uh, using my iPhone and my GoPro, but the problem with my iPhone is that um, it's overloaded. I use it as a phone, I use it as an email, I use it for chat, I use it for many things. I snap a photo of it, I share it over social media, and you know, using it as well for vlogging really overloads it you know imagine vlogging something or saying something focusing on something and then suddenly an email pops in or a chat or somebody calls you one thing i also don't like with my iphone 11 pro max is the lens distortion so um i look really really wide but i already have a wide face but i don't want to look really wider with the front camera of the iphone also for my gopro hero 7 uh, I noticed in my food vlog that the Hero 7 does not focus clearly into macro shots. But I love my Hero 7. I've taken it underwater, I've taken it up the mountain, I plan to go skiing with it in the future. So the Hero 7 will always be there as the you know handy pocket camera that I will easily bring out and 
shoot a, shoot a video. The beauty of a GoPro is you just simply click the top tick, and my, my, my default setting is that it's uh, on video and it easily captures the moment and the moment is not gone. But you know, if I were to use this Nikon, it takes forever to set up or this could be muted, yeah? It could work as a muted uh, camera and just voice over it. Or this one that does a good job in vlogging, which substitutes to my iPhone 11 Pro Max. My Fujifilm X-T200 weighs three-fourths the, the weight of my Olympus. What I like about it is that it mounts easily on my cheap selfie stick because of its light weight. The thing about this Fujifilm is it has a plastic body. I chose the dark gray because uh, I like I like dark stuff. Its plastic body makes it really lightweight. In the end, I just don't want to overload my iPhone with so many functions of videos and uh, photos. I, I just want to use my iPhone as a real phone. Yeah, play music and take videos and, and snapshots. But for serious vlogging, I want to deload my iPhone of its so many jobs. But I really love my iPhone. My real job is I'm a university professor here in Japan. And I'm in Zoom classes most of the time. And I, I have decided to up my game. You know, um, the HD camera of my MacBook Pro is not enough anymore. And uh, of course, I invested in good ring lights. Uh, so I got myself a Prestigio uh, ring light to bring a good impression to my class. And um, lately, I've decided to up my game and thought of a vlogging camera that can also be used as a webcam. So uh, I tested it over uh, Zoom, um, Fujifilm, and it turns out that uh, it's good. It gave me a better video, but the problem was uh, it was straight out of the box. So I, I forgot that I needed to download the the firmware for it to make it a webcam of my laptop uh, again straight off the out of the box the first step it would ask you is really to set the time and then upgrade the firmware because apparently it's it's manufacturer did it come up with the webcam feature not until june of 2020. straight out of the box i removed the geotags i removed the location i don't i don't need those things to remind me where i've been or where, where i shot those video where is the location because i think that will simply drain the battery and speaking of drain batteries today i i used my xt 200 the whole day but it just lasted for one hour so i had to charge it many times over and at the end of the day, I realized that I, I'm better off ordering uh, another set of batteries which just costs around $10 uh, a piece over Amazon. One problem in using Zoom for X-T200 is that Zoom has built-in features on touch-up appearances like uh, beauty mode. And the problem with beauty mode is that it somehow, you know, it somehow puts a filter and that also affects the performance of the webcam. One annoying feature of um, my Fujifilm is really the strap. This hook really annoys me because whenever I put the whenever I put the microphone here, well, good thing Fuji thought of uh, the sidewards opening of of the of the viewfinder. Okay, so. If ever you want to put any accessory here, it's good. It doesn't get in the way, but the camera strap really gets in the way. So I ended up removing everything because I don't need a camera strap anyway. And my Fujifilm X-T200 rests perfectly on my selfie stick. I tested its audio with an external microphone. I didn't trust it with its internal microphone. So I use a Deity digital microphone, which I'm using right now with my Nikon. And uh, that uh, what I like about it is that it's the, 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 the sound is really crisp. Uh, I shot a video with uh, with some wind noise and I really wanted that wind noise, to, wind noise for the effect that we were on top of a mountain where our university is located. How are your classes? This is online classes. Yeah. So um, I think um, this, this digital microphone did a good job in, uh, in keeping the noise low and focusing on the voice of the subject. So good job, Deity, for that. Macro and food shots. The first time I use this uh, for macro and food shots is for a ramen and uh, Starbucks coffee. 
and it did a bad job in focusing and I was forgiving then and I thought ah maybe I'm, I, I didn't configure it well so I had to tinker many times over onto how to put the continuous focus on and the focus area and so on I was able to make it work but uh, initially it didn't work as I expected it to be however uh, today as I was shooting it I realized that the problem with XT200 is that when it locks the focus on your eyes or your face or any face so once it gets used to focusing on the face or the eyes and then you suddenly change the object or the subject like your, your finger or, 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 or a product that you wanted to show it gets confused on where to focus so I had these shots I'll, I'll superimpose it with this video where uh, it was focused on me and then suddenly I point into something um, the cameraman had to press click click many times over and it wouldn't focus so sorry Fujifilm you did a bad job in focusing today many times <laughs> But I'll be forgiving. I'll probably use this at home. I'll use it vlogging. I'll use it while I'm talking. But if I were to expect good product uh, focus, I have to be very patient to capture the shot. One problem with this as well is after focusing on my face and I wanted to capture a landscape, it got confused. So trying to get a landscape shot took a while and it, you know, focus and focus, focus and focus. Most of the time it was unfocused. So I hope Fuji will do something on a firmware upgrade so that problem could be fixed in the future. So how does it perform in the dark? Uh, a while ago I took the trash out and uh, I think I was so red in the video. I'll just superimpose it again and see for yourselves how it performs on a darkly lit subject. Uh, I usually have that walking out of the apartment uh, shot. Uh, my iPhone does a bad job in, in that. Obviously, there is not much light. But uh, I think, because uh, really, there's no light outside. So I should be forgiving on that as well. How does it do in, uh, in bright light? Well, that's the first thing I did this morning when I, I took this out on a spin. So uh, it does fairly well on bright light, but adjusting back, to whoever is the focus or whoever is the subject like my face or my eyes that it locks the focus on it takes a while so um, what I can say because this is an entry-level camera it will take a while okay it is quite slow and uh, you have to not expect much from an entry-level uh, vlogging camera so how does the X-T200 fit in my vlogging ecosystem and my photography uh, well, I will still bring my GoPro around, you know, I just pull it out of my pocket and then shoot, click, it's on video mode, click again, video ends. So that easy for the GoPro. I will still keep my Nikon, my Olympus for um, light photography, casual photography. I never really use this as a, as a photography camera. My Nikon, which I'm using to film right now, will be will still be in the studio for my professional jobs but this will simply be my vlogging and my webcam uh, camera so uh, what's good with the xt200 is that it's lightweight it rests uh, neatly on my selfie stick i like its uh, retro futuristic look like like uh, like the olympus mirrorless camera i like um i like its color the video color I like the, um, the audio quality, it's very good. So um, maybe for firmware upgrade, um, what I don't like really with the XT200 is the focus. So once it locks on your face, it finds difficulty focusing on something else. And um, the battery life can stand some improvement, but this is my second uh, mirrorless camera and I already expect it, the battery life to be short. And that's why I already ordered extra batteries. So that's it. Uh, let's limit our expectation on this uh, webcam and as a vlogging camera. Thank you for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and uh, tune in for more vlog episodes and more gadget reviews in the future. Bye-bye. So this is how it looks when I record it on Zoom. And this is how I look on a normal HD camera of my MacBook Pro.